Wolf Dead podcast. How hey. How's everybody going today? What's everyone doing, America? I hope you're doing good. And, and everywhere else. I mean, come on, America? Yeah, it's we're true. A, we're I mean, a, we're a multinational podcast, Will. Right, but you have to remember, as an American, I often think of it as the only country in the world. True. It's just natural. It's just, true. It just happens. When you're born here. You forget no other about country matter. You, every, uh, everywhere else in the world is just cut off. Yes. Exactly. I actually, in my videos about DC Universe, the app, I would always get people commenting, this is not available in any country but America. <laughs> and I always felt really bad after the fact because I really should have prefaced with that. And then you always go, oh, yeah, other con- there's other countries. Oh, yeah. That li- Sorry, Australia. Listen, Australia. Yeah, I frequently, uh, that frequently happens to me. Mostly Canada. Yeah. People in Canada mm. will be like, uh, oh, that's not available. Or, oh, I have no idea about this. Or, oh, you didn't link. I have the link you have doesn't work. Yeah. Anyway, hello, everybody. I hope you're all doing well wherever you are. But yes. especially welcome if you're American. First... <laughs> yes. Welcome to the first Wolf Den podcast of 2021. Wow. It's been a wild ride, Will. I can't even it, believe it. It sure has, Robert. Uh, and as per the new year... We have some Nintendo Direct rumors, Will. Yeah, that we kind of just learned about right before we went live. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a Nintendo Direct leak uh, that is probably not even real, but yeah, we're gonna pretend that it is <laughs> uh, for a, a brief moment. We will pretend that it yeah. is. I suspect there'll be a Nintendo Direct sometime this month. We're due for one. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we get yeah. one every January. But you know, the- I never like to say. You know, I never like to jump on the, oh, we're getting a Nintendo Direct tomorrow hype train because I feel like that happens every week. Yes. Um, but it, it has been a while since we got like a regular standard big Nintendo Direct where they come out and they say, these are all the big Nintendo games plus all the major AAA third party titles you can expect to experience on the little handheld that could. But before we do any of that stuff, Will, we have yes. to talk about... Oh, yes. It's a new month. So it is a new month. Not only is it a new year, it's a new month, which means if you are subscribed to PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold, you got yourself some free games just waiting for you to download to your system of choice. And we're here to tell you what they are. Yes. Yeah. Starting with PlayStation. We got. Yes. Oh, OK. All right. We got You're some happy. good ones here. Uh, so these games are all available today. Uh, they're. Uh, on PlayStation 4, uh, you can go, you can go and get them right now. Uh, of course, wait till after the podcast, obviously. Um, but starting off on the PlayStation 5, because remember they do PlayStation 5 games now. Oh yeah, is Man Eater, the Shark Sim. <laughs> yes, that apparently doesn't take place at sea. A lot of it takes place like you have to get your shark on land. So. Yeah, this game was like a big hit when it first came out. A lot of there yeah. was like a lot of YouTube content, a lot of Twitch streamers playing it. Yeah, um, this was like the a goat simulator type game where everybody just like wanted to show all the crazy crap that they were doing I, in the game. I was offered something for it. I don't yeah. remember if it was a key or like a promotion or something, but I was like this this I, I don't know about this one. <laughs> Appar- but apparently it's uh, people like it i think it's one of those things it's like like you said it's like a goat simulator type deal yeah but um i think that the the main draw to this is just the violence and like the l- lunacy of it yeah and i'm not like i don't th- like sometimes violence is funny you know yeah but like yeah when that's the whole shtick it's, yeah, I, it just I'm yeah. Not, there needs to be I'm not in. a stronger, stronger context to what's going on. You can't just go out and because like it's like in Grand Theft Auto, like yeah, you can do all these violent acts and yeah, it's funny, but after a while that gets boring and you kind of want to do the main story. I will. To get I will say when I'm like just scrolling through TikTok and there's just like a random like like. Like somebody's like randomly yelling, or there's like a random like unexpected yeah. amount of violence. Like somebody bashes a plate against the wall. I think that's hysterical. I love that. I yeah. love like random violence like that. But yeah. when it's the whole shtick and it's expected, yeah. I it's it's not it's not my thing. So 
I'll, I'll say that I'll say two things on man eater. A lot of what I've seen of it reminds me of a PS2 original Xbox era game called Jaws Unleashed. Oh, yes. It is a licensed game based on the movie franchise Jaws, where you play as Jaws <laughs> and you do a lot of the same crap. I remember that. Yeah. Because it, like there's a there, mission. It in, was a, in the bargain bin a lot. <laughs> yeah. There, there, I remember there's a mission in that game where you have to, where you have to grab a guy who has the key card, bring him underwater with you to the door that you have to open with that key card. <laughs> and man eater is basically an hd version of that my good lord yeah uh yeah here it is man eaters on screen uh so if if that looks interesting to you it's completely free now if you have playstation plus yeah well and the second thing i want to say was this is specifically the ps5 version there is a version that comes with both games um so if you're getting if you have playstation plus and you want to play this on your playstation 5 make sure you get the right version Mm mm-hmm so okay that's that that's that so if it's interesting to you go for it yeah we also have shadow of the tomb raider which i'm which i am currently playing on xbox one so no i'm not happy because i had to pay for it when it came out uh but i'm finally playing it now uh it is it is a very good game it is noticeably different from uh the 2013 tomb raider and rise of the tomb raider I think we touched on this last week. It's because Crystal Dynamics wasn't the main studio making it. Uh, Idos Montreal was. Right. Because Crystal Dynamics was making Avengers. It definitely shows, not in terms of quality, but to more in terms of like art direction and style. So the original the original Tomb Raiders, the first two Tomb Raiders in this series had a lot more uh, platforming and exploration. Um and it was much it was much better delineated what was specifically a stealth section what was more of an action like a shooting section this one it like it's still open but it's it definitely follows you on a much more linear path the platforming is not as varied as uh the previous games and pretty much every every section every combat section starts as a stealth section but then you know, depending on how you do, it devolves into a shooter section or not. So, 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 there's Tomb Raider. Yes. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And then there's a third one, isn't there? Or is this the third uh, it's, one? This is the third one. The second one is Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, I was going to say that, but it sounded too cliche. <laughs> well, yeah, no, these these all have the worst names. <laughs> um, but. This this one I will say has a has a particularly bad story. Oh, okay. It, I, I got I got to be honest. From what I'm seeing right now, it doesn't look very good. <laughs> the well, story. This is the just, story. The trailer that they're showing, like, I think this is DLC because none of this is in the game. <laughs> it looks really <laughs> bizarre. Like nothing. Because I played the first one, the the regular yeah. old regular old vanilla Tomb Raider, and this right. is all like weird mystical stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, all that the with the trailer showing. This is like the definitive edition stuff. She's wearing like, like tribal is, garb, like you you do you do wear tribal gear at one point, but not that, not like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, that was that was DLC. What you just played for everybody. So you so in this game you will appropriate a culture. Yes, <laughs> because of course. <laughs> okay. All right. Sounds yeah. fine. It, yeah, Sounds I mean good. it's not. It's bad when you say it out loud, but it's, I mean, I'm it's on not, board, man. Let's appropriate. It's not cultures. as bad as it could have been. It's not as bad as it could have <laughs> right. been. I, I will say that it's a made-up culture. I'm sure. It, it's it's one of those like it takes place in in the Mayan ruins, so it's like a, a, an offshoot of the Mayan culture and right. whatnot. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So they so you don't get in too much trouble. It's not so bad if it's a made-up culture, but if you know. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, anyway. How about Greedfall. I've I never know, heard of this I game. I don't know anything about it. I think this is one of those games that is like a knockoff of another game, and then they took the name from another game and like use that. In this stunning action RPG, explore uncharted new lands as you set foot on a remote island seeping with magic and filled with riches, lost secrets, and fantastic treasures. 
You'll have complete freedom to shape your abilities, spells, and skills and decide whether to complete objectives with combat, diplomacy, deception, or stealth. Forge, forge this new destiny as you befriend or betray companions and entire factions. I think this is Assassin's Creed. <laughs> is what this is. Um, it came out in two, 2019. Okay. Uh, where is the Metacritic? Here we go. 72. Okay, that's not terrible. Yeah, it's respectful. It's average. All right. I did see apparently on the UK PlayStation Store, um, there's a glitch where it is selling for 10,000 pounds. That is a lot of pounds. Yeah, that is the exact opposite of free with your <laughs> Plus subscription. Focus Home Interactive. What have they made? Blood Bowl. I, I, Remember Blood Bowl? Blood no. Bowl was the uh it was it was the football game, the like but it was based off of something, wasn't it? Fantasy I football I, game. I th I think it was was it based off of a uh, freaking Warhammer or something? Or, or I don't Warcraft? Like actual I don't think Warcraft? So. No, I think it was just a rip off of War the Warcraft world and they just made it football. <laughs> Probably. Uh, well, anyway, what else have they made recently? Nothing. They ha World War Z. Oh, oh, that wasn't good. Wait, Saber Interactive? Oh! No, um, that's sh that one Sherlock Holmes game that everybody likes. Crime and Crimes and Punishments. Oh, they pu this is a publisher and developer. Uh, they published okay. World War Z. They did not okay. publish this game. Interesting. So what, I want to know what they developed. Ah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, oh, began working with giant software creator of Farming Simulator. Okay, okay. Oh, they did do Sherlock Holmes, Track Mania, Runaway, and mm. whatever. Okay. So no, nothing, nothing amazing. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to try Greedfall, go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Apparently, it's fine. <laughs> oh, Spiders is the developer. What? Hold on. Now I gotta. I'm not going back. <laughs> I'm I have to because I said something incorrect. Okay. So so now I now I need to correct myself. Spiders made uh the tech the the Technomancer. That was the last game they made. Oh look at this. Whoa. Uh, oh, I've, I've heard of the Technomancer. I have never heard of the Technomancer. I've heard of that. I don't think it's good. <laughs> yeah, none of these. Of Orcs and Men, twenty twelve. <laughs> yeah, I don't know any of these. Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. That was Jack their the first Ripper. game, 2010. There you go. All right, cool. We're not done, though. That's not that's nope. for PlayStation. But we yes, got Xbox. Yes, over on the Xbox so side of things. They have been doing good. They have not been doing no, good stuff. They're, they're down, they're, things just continue to go down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for the Xbox One, because they haven't started adding Series X games to this yet. Boo. On the Xbox One, uh, for the entire month of January, you get Little Nightmares. Okay, people like that game. Do they? I think so. <laughs> I'm all right. Uh, all right, well, you do that. I'll say from, then from January 16th to February 15th, you get the Dead Rising remaster. That's the remaster of the first Dead Rising game. For the Little Xbox Nightmares one. has a 9 out of 10 on Steam. Oh, wow. I don't see the Metacritic, though. Might not have enough for a Metacritic. Keep going. All right. Uh, okay, so the Dead Rising remake, remaster, rather. And then on the Xbox 360, which you can play on your Xbox One, uh, from January 1st to January 15th is King of Fighters 13. Okay, some people will like that. <laughs> yeah, but I always feel like King of is that the most recent King of Fighters? You Def wouldn't know. Why am no, I asking? That's definitely not. <laughs> I think there's um, like a billion King of Fighters. There's a lot of King of Fighters. It's like the only thing keeping SNK in business. <laughs> that and all their arcade super packs. True. All right, while well, I'm looking that up. And then from January 16th to the 31st is an original Xbox game called Breakdown. Ooh. Now, 
Is this a hardcore, now this, uh, you know? Is this like Def Jam, but it's all hardcore bands? No. <laughs> Though I kind of wish it was now. No, I actually remember this game because it had a lot of buzz back in the day. It was a first-person shooter, but it had a big emphasis on uh, hand-to-hand combat and interaction with the world around you. That sounds like, awful. <laughs> it <laughs> Apparently, the, the fist fighting controlled fairly well, Whoa. and they're like... That was a cool yeah. flip. And like you, see, you, can, oh. you can you can completely interact with the world. Like you can get food out of vending machines. You can move chairs and crap. It, it was the level of interactivity at the time was a, more advanced than other shooters of the era is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. So it tried to do a lot and it, it maybe it didn't necessarily succeed. Um, but it was just interesting to see at the time a developer try to do something outside of the box like that. Uh, so little nightmares has a 78 on Metacritic for PS4 for what it's worth. Okay. Um, so yeah, people like it. De- uh, dead rising of call. Of course, that's a, a classic. I don't like that game. Why? Uh, because I don't like the way it's the, the, the format of it. Well, first of all, the original dead rising, all the people you have to save are idiots. Yeah, they don't want to be saved, and they will just get eaten by zombies, and the game will fail you for it. Um, the, what's his name? Otis always calls you at the worst times, and then gets mad at you for hanging up because you have to, you know, fight off zombies or leave the room, and then he has to call you again. And it and you, Frank just listens to it on his headphone like this and walks slowly, which is asinine. And also the whole seventy-two hour gimmick that it has where like you have to do all your missions in 72 hours and then the day resets and you got to do it all over again mm-hmm. i don't want to i don't i don't like that i'm sorry <laughs> i'm not i'm not into that i don't think that's i don't think that's fun <laughs> so, i did not have fun when i played this game so so the it resets and you have to do it all over again uh does everything reset do you get to keep things like what what's that you get about? To, yeah you, you get to keep things and i think whatever missions you completed stay completed oh okay but it's just, you know, it's basically to, you know, you keep replaying the day and you keep leveling up every time you play, you know, but like, I don't want to do that. Right, right. Uh, so, well, people like that game. It's a very popular game. Yeah. So there it I is. Guess. That's like the only one that sticks out to me of all of these. I yeah, think, that I, I, I think, uh playstation wins again i think X- yeah. xbox is really just they're moving all of their stock into game pass i think games with yeah is gonna end uh, soon. i forgot I, f- I forgot all the games but like they announced that uh Inf- injustice 2 is, is being added to game pass that's a big deal that's a big game i think now yeah now when they do this they're also gonna say what's new to game pass yeah so we should probably start adding that in too, because today yeah. I think they that yeah, January fifth is that today? Yeah, yeah. They just announced a whole bunch of games coming to Game Pass. So Injustice two, yeah, which is a great game. Torchlight three. Some people like that. I think isn't that game yep. free to play? Um, uh, what remains of either Finch? I know it's very popular with the Walking Sim crowd. Oh yeah, it's a it's a cult classic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some there's uh, there's a lot here. Well, Game Pass Ultimate Perks, Spell Break, Enchant- enhance your chat uh, your chapter progression with re- uh, there's too many it's with all this <laughs> mystical stuff. There's a lot of multi consonant words. You know that's why I don't like mystical stuff. I can't read, so I Man. can't can't do it. Uh, all right, that's it. There's actually not that many games, but there's some good games, yeah. and that's all that matters. Uh, so there you go. That's your free stuff for the month. Get it while you can. Yeah. Get it while it's hot. Yeah. Even if, even if you're not going to play the game, just get it anyway. Because you never know. That's what Will does. He just gets every, he just redeems <laughs> every single one that comes up. All right. I'll tell you this because it actually came in handy. You know, because I have Uncharted 4 and Battlefront 2 on disc. But I didn't feel like finding the discs. So I just downloaded them because I had them thanks to PlayStation Plus. And... And thanks to PlayStation Plus, I was able to play Journey and Gone Home when I had like two hours to kill for both games. So you never know. 
you never know when you're going to want to play some random ass game. I do want to finish uh, Journey. I never, I played it for like an hour and then I fell asleep. It's the only game I've <laughs> fallen asleep up, but it wasn't the game's fault. I was very tired. You are halfway through with that game. I know. I couldn't do I couldn't do it for what I liked it. I liked what I was doing, but uh it, it like it takes it, t- it took me a minute. Like it hit me at a certain point and then like the se- I don't want to give away the second to last level, but playing it I had the the sense of I am going to die. Yeah. You know, no, I, like, I, the, I the whole time. I know the the the, the gist. Yeah. Um anyway, uh we got some notifications here from angry eric with five months thank you both for letting me hang out always nice to have some friends oh thanks Aww. angry eric you're always thanks for friends uh nello fn with seven months love these podcasts awesome work guys thank you very much uh we also got pole line with 25 months thank you kindly thank you Picky Gamer with five months. Keep up the good work. Guys, question, is Final Fantasy VII Remake worth buying for $40? If you want to play it, yes. Yes. You should kind uh, of know if that's your type of game. Yeah. I also, I keep harping on the fact, because they don't make it clear, it's not the entire Final Fantasy VII. It's like a third of it. It is. There's so more to this remake coming. Yeah, it is a completely new game. Yeah. That said, from my understanding, it's still a substantial amount of time you're going to sink into this game um but that said if you feel like you know if it's not the entirety of final fantasy 7 then maybe 40 bucks would be better a better price for you than the full 60 I- i'm just saying like don't get this game if you played final fantasy 7 and you want all of final fantasy 7 don't expect all of it but yeah. if you've never played final fantasy 7 before this is going to it's that's irrelevant information because it's going to be a completely yeah. different experience for you anyway uh, Kiki's me in the chat says there's a demo. Uh, I wasn't sure if the demo is still available, but yeah, play the demo. See if you yeah, don't try know the if demo it's your type first. of game, play the demo. But if you think yeah. you're gonna like it, then yeah, forty dollars is is everybody I know who's played it uh, likes it. So yeah. Uh, anyway, now it's time to talk about the Nintendo Direct leak and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, here we go. So uh, we, so I saw like a tinge of this in a tweet today. It was uh, Direct Feed Gaming, who is uh, Nate the Hate, I believe, and he was just going off about how fake this is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now here we are talking about it in an article from Dextero, who says yeah. viral Nintendo Direct leak reveals Switch Pro. So that's already I, I don't like it. Breath of the Wild yeah. two and more. Is it real? Uh, Nintendo Direct leak has surfaced online claiming that a January 11th uh, on that on January 11th the Japanese gaming juggernaut will unveil a Switch Pro and plenty of new games the only question is of course is it real so when is the 11th that is Monday yeah uh, okay Nintendo didn't have a real direct for all of 2020 really <laughs> instead of Instead, streaming a series of mini and indie directs in an attempt to quench fans' thirst for content. I didn't realize they didn't have one for all of 2020. I mean, uh, I guess you just assumed any direct was a direct, not necessarily mini or indie or whatnot. Right. Like, I knew there were announcements, but I, then yeah. you have stuff like Paper Mario, which is dropped in a tweet. Yeah. Uh, for those still star for Nintendo news, you may not have too much longer to wait to see some big game reveals. If this leaked document pro- proves to be real and not some hoax, the leak in question is of a sheet of paper detailing all of the games and hardware that will be shown off at Janu at a January Nintendo direct. The top of the page features the Nintendo logo in all of its glory with a big bolded, internal use only directly under it and this is not in english uh, the tweet is by rodrigo 64 uh translated the tweet says a list of nintendo games for 2021 has been leaked on reddit and then deleted after five minutes what do you think about it uh i will keep reading the article before we comment on it All nintendo right. switch pro and games quote leaked 
From there, the document claims that Nintendo will be unveiling its next piece of hardware in the form of a Switch Pro that will have 4K support. Okay, so I already don't believe it. Pro Joy-Cons, Pro Joy-Con? An HD screen and a price of $400. Interesting. A mm -hmm. date for the Switch Pro is listed as April 23rd, 2021, which seems to be plan the planned release. Elsewhere, new games listed include Mario Kart 9, Splatoon 3, <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey 2, and Metroid Resurgence, all planned for 2021. This sounds like a uh, high schooler scribbled this on a desk. I absolutely. This sound this sounds like what were the what were the top Nintendo games on the Switch? Let's just increase the number. Yeah. This, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> um, Breath of the Wild 2's name possibly revealed. Next, third-party titles, Kingdom Hearts, Destiny's Embrace, Bayonetta 3. This is just uh, this is just everything everybody wants. I, like, all the yeah. games that we know are in the docket from Nintendo. And a, quote, premium edition of Grand Theft Auto 5, which doesn't make any sense, all stand well, out as non-pro games. The Grand Theft Auto, the Grand version of GTA Five on current gen consoles and what's going to come out on next gen is called the Premium Edition. Oh, yeah, no. That said, <laughs> some games claim to only be releasing on the Switch Pro model, such as Final Fantasy VII Remake, Devil May Cry Five, and Black Ops Cold War. <laughs> I okay, so I I was playing a little bit of Cold War the past few days, yeah. like straight up Cold War, not not war zone straight up right. cold war because i want to upgrade my guns and i had nobody to play with at the time and that right. game runs like absolute trash on my xbox series x wow so no that game is not coming to the switch <laughs> um most notably on the very bottom of the leak the legend of zelda echoes of the past is listed with an april 23rd release the same as the alleged switch pro this is most likely supposed to be the follow-up to Breath of the Wild as a sequel has been in development. Is the leak real, says Dextero. While all of this may seem like a Nintendo fan's dream of come true, this needs to all be taken with a grain of salt. I would say a huge grain of salt, yes. For yeah, I would say the entire salt shaker. For one thing, first-party software is spelled incorrectly as soft war. <laughs> All right, well, this leaker needs a little bit more work. Yeah, no, they're right, it is. <laughs> Another glaring spelling error is Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville. Na <laughs> plants Possessive versus Zombies yeah. Battle for Neighborville. Finally, it seems highly unlikely that a new Metroid game could really be releasing in 2021 as development for Metroid Prime 4 shifted from Bando Namkai yep, <laughs> to, to <laughs> Retro Studios <laughs> and had been restarted since the project's announcement in 2017. In any case, only time will tell if the leak will, uh, ends up being true and Nintendo blah, 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 blah. It's, it's freaking, there's no way any of this is real. I didn't even look at yeah. the document yet. Uh, I've been looking at it and... It's cute the way they try to add like little like notes to some of these uh, line items, but yeah, this is definitely just wish fulfillment. So uh, Nate the Hate in his tweet, or I'm sorry, Direct Feed Gaming in the tweet said that the logo is not the updated Nintendo logo. I didn't know they had one. It's Nintendo's logos are weird because it 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 always looks the same, but it's like subtle differences, like. During the um, the Wii and the Wii U era, the Nintendo logo was just silver. Yes, and I, then yes. So 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 but then so Daniel yeah, uh, Shoviano or whatever his name yeah. is. This isn't even the current Nintendo logo, and then he lists he shows the logos. So the current one yeah. is is a is a red rectangle. Right. Interesting. But I mean, the nineteen eighty three Nintendo logo and the twenty sixteen Nintendo logo could be swapped for each other i i i mean there's barely there's barely a difference i understand but i mean if they're you you know that that's this is a company that would be very strict you know if, if they get True. the logo yeah. wrong i would imagine they the the 
supervisor would be like, remake this right now. No, trust me. I've seen branding document kits and they are hyper specific. Yes. I've made them before. Yes. Um, so, yeah, an internal memo would definitely use the 2016 logo. Yes, yes, yes. Um, there was other things he said. Why would they start with Yakuza 6? It's not even capitalized correctly. Fallout 3 New Vegas, <laughs> which, is, which is not the name of the game. Nope, Unannounced yeah. 2D Zelda coming out in three months seems a bit sudden, even by Nintendo standards. Well, that I don't know about because they, they've yeah. been just a wild card lately. So there's a lot here that they didn't even talk about in the article. Yeah. Nintendo World Park Tour. Uh, we already had that. Oh, wait, no, that's a, this is a soft a war. Game. Yeah. It's a piece of soft war, Will. Right. Says it right <laughs> here. Um, Mario Kart 9. Okay, Splatoon 3. Okay, um, Super Mario Odyssey 2. There's no way. Um, yeah. There's no way all of this in 2021. <laughs> Fire Emblem Echoes, Path of Radiance. All right, dude. Uh, Metroid and Metroid Resur Resurgence, right? Th third party King Kingdom Hearts Destiny's Embrace, Bayonetta 3, Shin Megami Tensei 5, which that's a possibility. I think but that was announced, right? Shin Megami Tensei 5, there's a possibility we're getting that because yeah. that was announced when the Switch was first announced and then it wasn't talked about f until last year, right? I think we got yeah. two trailers last year, yeah, or something. Is it same thing with Bayonetta 3. That's been in development for a while. Uh, yes. But we haven't heard anything since it was, uh, you know. Right. Uh, like announced. Um, Shin Megami Tensei, I think we're we're due for... Uh, this is fall, so that's that's a possibility. Yeah. Ubisoft, Assassin's Creed, Valhalla, Watch Dogs, Legions, Far Cry 6. <laughs> what the heck? Imagine all of this in one Nintendo Direct. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a nice little uh, note under the Ubisoft games and also uh, the Capcom games, uh, only available natively on Nintendo Switch Pro, cloud version available on base Nintendo Switch. Yeah. So they really want you to think that the Switch Pro is coming out. I missed at the very top, it says uh, hardware Nintendo Switch Pro. I missed that. Yeah. Um, uh, 4K TV support, Dock Pro, Joy-Con Pro, Bluetooth audio support, high definition screen, 256 gig, I guess, internal storage. NVIDIA, what the hell is that? DLLS 2.0. Price $399. I mean, I've been saying this for years. If Nintendo is going to make a new Switch, it's going to be an iteration of the current Switch to replace yeah. the current switch it's going to be the new nintendo switch or something along those lines we're not getting a switch pro in, in yeah. this capacity that's going to play different games no unless unless they're going to pull some wild card i don't see any of this happening um i mean it's very possible that the new nintendo switch does have a better processor and could possibly run you know games at a higher frame rate or better resolution but, you know, like you said, I don't think they're it's going to be like the Switch Pro. It's going to be like it's going to be, you know, Switch 2.0, whatever. It's the exact same thing, but it just runs better. Um, I, I, I think 1080p screen. And that's it. I don't think it's yeah. going to be dock 4K or anything. Unless there's like some weird upscaling going on. That's possible. Yeah. But it's not going to be like, you know, native 4K. Um. So who, King Will in the chat says, if you turn the paper around, it says that Goku is coming to Smash. Don't tell me that. <laughs> Where would it say that? Which way do I got to turn it? And where do I read that? I think he's, I think he's effing with you. I, I don't know, man. This, I mean, this is very clearly fake. Yeah. Uh, there's so much in this. Upcoming yeah. Nintendo Switch Pro titles, Crash Bandicoot, Eastward, Eastward? Fall Guys, which is no. <laughs> Dirt 5, Yakuza 6, uh, Persona 5 Strikers. Is that, a, is that a, like Mario Strikers? Is that like a soccer game? Um, Apex Legends, we know that's happening. Control Ultimate Edition. Okay, well, we already have Control. Fallout well, 3, New Vegas, Near Replicant. Yeah. Uh, this is just every game that people are hyped about. Yeah. Dead or Alive 6, Hollow Knight's uh, Silk Song. 
uh, The Witness, Hitman 3, Man Eater, Borderlands 3, Dragon Ball Kakarot, Little Persona Nightmares 5 Strikers 2. is an actual game, by the way. I yeah. thought it was a, I thought it was a soccer game. A Way Out, No More Heroes 3, Bravely Default 2, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Monster Hunter Rise, Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition, Super Mario 3D World, Bowser's Fury. Uh, also, we missed uh, the Resident Evil 2 remake, the Resident Evil 3 remake, Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition. It's, uh, it's literally like like somebody just typed best selling games of 2020, yeah. and like, and this is this is what happened. I will say this. I, w- I will say this. I've always said that it shocks me that GTA 5 and Call of Duty are not on the Switch. And at least this guy, this guy must be a fan of the show because he put both <laughs> of those on there. Uh, to play devil's advocate, let's assume that this is, uh, you know. Oh, and uh, he says the new Zelda game is Echoes of the Past. Cool, dude. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, he lo- this guy loves Echoes. Uh, assuming that this actually came from Nintendo, it's, I mean, it's possible that this was a plan and then got pushed back. Because mm-hmm. I'm a, I have been saying that sometime in March there will be a new hardware of some sort, um, but it's unclear if that got pushed. So uh, I wouldn't ex- act, like don't get your hopes up. Basically, if if you're if you want to yeah. buy a Nintendo Switch, uh, you might be waiting a while. Like it might not come, the new one might not come in March, or the new iteration or whatever might not happen in March because Nintendo's backed up. So. Uh, I mean, this is clearly not real. <laughs> yeah. But whatever Nintendo is working on might not. They might have had plans to announce it soon, and uh, it got pushed. I think yeah. I looked up that uh, they had they had a few months between the uh, announcement of the 2DS XL and the release of the 2DS XL. So okay. if there is a new hardware iteration that was supposed to come out around March or April, we should be hearing about it soon. Um, but I think that all of Nintendo's plans have been pushed back. So uh, yeah. don't hold your breath, basically. So, yeah, I mean, besides all of the glaring syntax errors and how absolutely... F- I mean, every time somebody posts a picture of a document like this, it is always fake. I don't think it has ever been yeah. real. No. Uh, except for those, you know, like leaks of like the actual memos from like the 90s, you know, from like yeah. the, the whole big leak that happened last year yeah. with all the Super Nintendo game. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, like, also, too, it's on paper and who prints out paper anymore? <laughs> True. Well, I mean, it's, a, it's an old fashioned company. Well, they probably still have to. A lot of, the, point. A lot of these people probably don't look at screens all day yeah It'd probably require a document in front of them you mean video game developers don't look at screens all day uh, yeah who would have thought i'm telling you some of these like big you know big the top brass and the japanese uh the headquarters probably just look at memos and get talked to all day yeah uh so anyway uh don't buy any of this i think yeah. i mean uh, did anybody is there anybody in this chat right now who thinks any of this has any, you know, clout or any, any, is there anything here? No, I don't think so. I don't think any single one of you believed in this. Is there anything on this list that we said that you wish was true? I mean, all of it. <laughs> I, mean, all I of want it, yes. all of it. I don't think there's any <laughs> anything here that I don't want. Yeah. Call good of Duty point. Cloud version. There's no way it's gonna be. It's gonna run good. Um, I, I, again, it's just it it boggles my mind that Activision has not put Call of Duty on Switch. They put it on the DS for fuck's sake. I I Cold War is weird. I don't like it. Yeah. Like I'm only playing it because it let, gets to upgrade my guns for Warzone. But it's a different yeah. engine than Warzone, and you could feel it. It feels zoomed in. Oh. The guns bigger on the screen. It's I mean, if you haven't played Call of Duty in a while, it feels like Call of Duty. But I've been playing Warzone right. so much, this feels like a weird well, bastardization of my Call of Duty. Because this is the Treyarch year, right? For Call it's, of Duty? Whatever, whatever, whoever made Call of Duty last year, this is the other guy. Yeah. Well, there's three guys. Yeah. Th- technically, there's like five guys, but there's three main guys. Mm-hmm. We disconnected. 
just keep going. We'll, all we'll, right. we'll, we'll it'll fix there's, itself. There's, I know Modern Warfare was last year. That was Infinity Ward. And, uh, the Black Ops series is usually Treyarch, but I think they also got Sledgehammer and Raven to help out. And Neversoft is in there somewhere. I don't know. It's Neversoft? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, like the Tony Hawk people? Yes. I wish I was kidding. That's why... That's why every Tony Hawk game, that's why Tony Hawk Ride, Shred, uh, the original HD remake, remake, and Tony Hawk Five are all garbage. <laughs> so I, uh, I have a, I changed one setting to try to fix that when the stream yeah. disconnects, and it didn't do anything. So nah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep changing one setting at a time every stream until something fixes that. <laughs> Okay, yeah, this was a Treyarch year with additional help from Raven Software, High Moon Studios, Beanox, Activision Shanghai, and Sledgehammer Games. Holy crap. If I remember correctly, this was the one that Treyarch had a really hard time trying to make. So Activision basically threw all of their studios at it so to like, make sure it came out on time. I kind of feel really bad because there was Modern Warfare, which is a big deal. Uh-huh. And that was a big deal game, and they knew it was going to sell a lot. And then yeah. they uh, they were like, F it, we're putting a Battle Royale in there too. So whatever yeah. studio made Modern Warfare also had to make the Battle Royale, right? That's not made by two different people. Uh, apparently, according to the Wikipedia, it was made by, it was developed by Infinity Ward, Treyarch, and Raven with additional support from High Moon Studios, b Knox, Sledgehammer Games, and Activision Shanghai. I, th I think Raven made Modern Warfare, uh, the, the the Warzone. I think okay. Raven is the and one who's working currently working on Warzone. Okay. Um, but anyway, they had to put all of Call Cold War's guns into Warzone, and they all right. feel way different in Warzone than they do in, in Cold War. It's It's such a bizarre mess. I don't know. It it used to be so simple. Infinity Ward made made a game one year, and then uh, Treyarch made the other game the other year, and then they threw Sledgehammer in there to make the third to make a third game because development times naturally got uh, you know longer and more expensive. But then it, Activision just like fuck it. All of our studios just make Call of Duty now. All of them, every single one. It's kind of all hands on deck every year. Yeah. And it just gets worse, and it keeps leading to worse and worse crunch. And then, you know, eventually, you know, everybody gets laid off because Activision is a terrible company. <laughs> so, so when they put all of the Cold War guns in Warzone, uh, it took a while for yeah. them to do that, and then they finally did it. They had the integration, and uh, it broke the game. Uh, now <laughs> there's one gun that everybody uses because it it two taps people you shoot them twice and they're just dead and it, yeah, yeah. It, it, you could shoot them from across the map so it everybody's just kind of sitting waiting for raven to update the game to fix that it's it's yeah so it, it's a yeah. it's a mess still love the game though for some reason so it's like an abusive uh relationship <laughs> anyway that's that about uh Call of Duty, apparently, we started talking yeah. about Call of Duty. Um, we've already been done talking about uh, this absolutely horrendous fake Nintendo Direct leak. But again, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised we're getting a Nintendo Direct sometime soon. Did they saw that Wikipedia list of Nintendo Directs? Yes. Yes, because oh, I know Wikipedia got rid of like all of their lists. Wikipedia got rid of like a lot of useful lists. Yeah, they were like, it is nobody now looks at these. It is now very difficult to find a list of GameCube games that support progressive scan. Yes. And for a retro gamer, that's important. There was in it. Wait, there were Nintendo Directs last year. Like full Nintendo Directs? I mean, they're listed as Nintendo Directs on the site. Yeah. Uh, February 2020, Animal Crossing, Nintendo Direct. Um... Nintendo Direct release date and information regarding Ring Fit Adventure in China. So it was only in China. <laughs> uh, Super Mario Bros. 35th, 35th anniversary, <laughs> September 3rd. So it was all Super Nintendo. So all these are like individual directs. They're not like full directs right. with like other things. Monster Hunter Direct. I don't remember that one. 
but that was in September also. Yeah. Uh, and then that's it. What did we have? Did we have January? We had Smash Brothers Byleth. Uh, really? There was none last January at all. Oh, hmm. Pokemon. There's a Pokemon Direct for Rescue T, uh, Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. Oh, and the <laughs> Sword and Shield expansion. Um. Mario Maker Two last May. What about what about Januarys? I want to know Januarys. Mini Direct. Uh. There's no, there's never a pattern. I always try to look for a pattern, yeah. and there's just you can't predict Nintendo. That's you why I don't always. bother. That's why I never bother, you know, saying predicting them when there's going to be a Nintendo Direct because it's like, who who can who can keep up? Yeah, it's, uh, they they always do their own thing. Yeah, but we are due for one. Hey, more Nintendo stuff. Yeah, can you believe it? Oh, but first we gotta say, uh, thank you. Proud Prince for the seven months. Happy one year. Oh, my God. Oh, it was oh. 12 years total. Uh, 12 months total. Thank you, Proud Prince. Thank you. Uh, Zonum, thank you for the Twitch Prime. And Dark Bite, thank you for the five months. I love your faces. Uh, Circa in the chat says, Cold War was originally supposed to be made by Sledgehammer and Raven, but they had issues working together, so Treyarch was made lead and only had a year to make it with all three companies. Holy that's crap, what, dude. That's what I was... <laughs> misremembering but holy yeah holy crap yeah well that's but that's what i mean by making call of duty now is a shit show it's so not good on on xbox series i mean it runs like 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 it's inexcusable how it runs on xbox yeah. series like, like like i'm just playing the multiplayer i'm not even playing the, the campaign or anything but like there's one level it's like a big snow level and there's like a you use like snowmobiles to get around and stuff and when yeah. you <laughs> I kept looking down the sights of my sniper at one particular rock, and every time I would do it, the game would freeze. <laughs> the game would like stop and then load up. It was yeah. It's there's like huge frame dips every once in a while. It's it's insane for the big levels because there are big levels in it and there's regular yeah, size yeah. levels. <sighs> anyway. Uh, anyway, Nintendo acquired Next Level Games, the makers of Luigi's Mansion 3 on the Nintendo Switch. The company announced today, Vancouver-based Next Level has delivered seven titles published by Nintendo, going back to Super Mario Strikers for the GameCube in 2005. So is this one of them, uh, is this one of them second party studios? Uh, no, I believe this counts as a first party studio because they own them. Well, now, now it's a first party. Now it's a first party. But previously, uh, it was second. Was second about. party. The second party means that the company, that the parent company, has a substantial financial investment, but they are, for all intents and purposes, independent. So that like is Nintendo that, had it. That is Game Freak. Game Freak is second yes. party, correct? Well, no, because Game Freak has also put games out on other systems. That's what I mean, but. Doesn't Nintendo have a financial stake in Game Freak? And then they also uh, put out stuff on other systems? Because second party is the weird, up. like like the weird one that's like hard to define. First, so first second party th is the, the 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 developer is owned by the, the 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 developer is only putting games on one console. That's what first so, party is. So the prototypical second party uh was Rare during the N64 days. Nintendo owned a stake in Rare, and Rare only published games on Nintendo platforms, but Nintendo didn't outright own Rare. They only had, like, a, a majority stake in the company. Mm -hmm. But at any time, like, they could have been bought out, which they were by Microsoft. Um, so it, I think a second party is a company that has a significant financial investment from a parent company and only publishes games for that platform but is able to leave basically a second party developer is a colloquial term often used by game enthusiasts hey that's us and that's media us. to describe game studios who take development contracts from platform holders and develop games exclusive to that platform i.e. a non-owned developer making games for a first party company so like 
like rare, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, but Nintendo like does Freak. not Nintendo does not have a financial stake in Game Freak. I don't think they need a financial stake. It says here non-owned developer. So a developer that isn't but, owned by the by the platform holder, but they make games for the platform holder anyway. Well, cuz well, exclusively cuz Game Freak has also put out Little Town Hero, which is on PS4, Xbox One, uh, Giga Rec Alt, which is on PS4 and Xbox One, Tembo the Badass Elephant, which wasn't on any Nintendo system. Right. Uh, uh, as a balance to not being able to release their game for other platforms, second party developers are usually offered higher royalty rates than third party developers. These studios may have exclusive publishing agreements for other business or other business relationships with the platform holder, but maintain independence. Okay. So. Yeah, this seems more like they only release games for one platform, but they're not right. owned by that. So like Platinum? Well, no, Cause Platinum because they were going to put out Scalebound on the Xbox. A Wonderful 101 is coming to PS4. Yeah, but they did release Scalebound for Xbox. <laughs> right, but they almost did. <laughs> they almost did, but they didn't. You know, they have a lot of projects for PlayStation coming out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Second party is the weird one that nobody ever gets defined as. It's always either first yeah. or third. and Because there's too many rules for second party. Yeah. Anyway, uh, next level games. Uh, terms of the deal were not disclosed. The statement from Nintendo said that a number of uh, owner directors of Next Level recently determined that it, the time was right for them to sell their shares. The company expects that a closer relationship with the studio will deliver an anticipated improvement in development speed and quality. Nintendo says the deal will close on March 1st. Next Level's Luigi's Mansion 3, which launched on October 31st, 2019, was a critical and commercial success, selling 7.83 million copies worldwide as of November. Next Level also won awards for Luigi's Mansion 3 at the Game Awards in 2019, the Dice Awards, and the BAFTA's Game Awards in 2020. Founded in uh, 2002, the studio also developed 2009's Punch-Out! reboot for the Wii and 2013's Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon for the 3DS. You liked that Punch-Out! reboot. That was a really good reboot of Punch-Out! Um, so, yeah. Oh, they made Cybertron Adventures. Yes. Oh, the Wii version. Get that's the Wii. The Get Wii out version. Of here. Get out of here. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, they did NHL Hits Pro, which I think was the worst version of NHL Hits, but <laughs> but that was that wasn't their fault. That was the the that was actually the NFL's fault. That NHL Hits Pro was bad. Uh, Super Mario Strikers, Super Mario Strikers Charged, uh, Spider Man Friend or Foe, which I remember. That was a weird game. Punch Out, uh, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon on the Wii. Yeah, so that's the version you want to play. Uh, and then Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon, Luigi's Mansion Three, and Metroid Prime Federation Force, the one everybody likes. <laughs> uh, I mean, what I'm taking out of this is we could get another Mario Strikers. That's what I'm taking out. Of we this could get, we get another Mario Strikers. We can get another Mario Punch Out. We're definitely getting another luigi's mansion out of this yeah well yeah yeah probably in the far future but we're yeah. due for a strikers i would love a mario strikers game i played that yeah. game like way after it came out like yeah years after it came out uh and uh i was like yo this game how can i have missed this game this game's great they don't really do a lot of the mario sports games anymore no well they did like, tennis they did te yeah they did tennis but like there was Mario Sluggers, Mario Strikers, Mario Hoops. You know, then they haven't really touched upon that in a long time. I feel like they used to bounce between DS and uh, and you know Wii and Wii U. Yeah, and, and I feel like that was mostly. I feel like that was mostly because EA wasn't putting their sports games on Nintendo platforms, yeah. so they had to compensate. I loved Mario Golf. I would love a new Mario Golf. Yeah, but I would also love Mario Strikers. Mario Tennis was a yeah. was a little bit of a letdown. Thought that was going to be a a little more fun than it ended yeah. up being i would be excited for another punch out though i think that that could be the time is right for that to come back 
Uh, you linked a PDF document about this too. Yeah. So this is the this is the statement released by Nintendo. I thought it would be good to have the source, but then I realized it's all legalese. Yeah. Uh, so sorry. Yeah, we're not. It's not fun. Legalese isn't fun, yeah. guys. No, it's pretty short though. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. Yes. It's also interesting because Nintendo is not Microsoft. They don't go out and buy companies every other day. So for them to just come out and just buy next level games, like that says a lot. That says like Nintendo really likes the work they've done. They trust these guys. They want them to be included in the Nintendo family. And I don't think they've done this, especially for a Western developer since retro, you know, before they made Metroid Prime. Mm hmm. So like this this is this is exciting. This is big news. So Luigi's Mansion 3. Yes. Would we have said that that was made by a third party developer? It's, I don't think we would. I when we, we would know say like it's a first party Nintendo game, you know? Right. But it was made by a company not owned by Nintendo who could right. have Yeah. You know, Nintendo contracted them to make the game. That's where I but. think second party comes in hand, Will. That's what I'm saying. This is like it's like it's like not a first party, it's not a third party. So it's gotta be a second party. But again, I, think, like, I don't like Wikipedia's uh uh <laughs> I don't like the way Wikipedia defines second party. The only company again, the only company that I know that everybody agreed it was a second party was rare during mm -hmm. the N64 era. Ever right. since then, it's been like I don't know. Like, what is a second party? Like, nobody's had a clear definition. I think we need to redefine second party. This is a perfect example of, of, of a good use of second party right here. That we can't do because it's, it, it's, uh, it's too hard to define. A second party is a video game developer that is independent from a platform holder but exclusively makes games for that platform due to significant financial compensation. Either better uh, bonuses uh, based on sales, whether it be a financial stake in the company overall, um, something along those lines. I, I, Does that I work? I would say it's a company, it, it's, a, it's a developer that's not owned by the uh platform holder mm -hmm. but ha but is making games for that platform holder that i would exclusively i, would, I wouldn't say exclusively because this isn't exclusive or well, wasn't exclusive see i feel the i mean it was exclusive from 2013 to 2019 it was exclusive so so here's the thing. so now i'm thinking of like insomniac games mm -hmm. was technically a second party up until uh that game Fuse they did, which was out on, which was made by EA mm -hmm. and available on other platforms. A second party to me seems like it has an end date where like you, you'll, you're only second party for a certain period of time. The, the, and then you either go third party or first party. So it's, I think now it's on the next first party. I think if you're making a game that is an exclusive game, to a platform you're but you also make games for other but like for example luigi's mansion like that's a that's a big nintendo ip you can't say nintendo luigi's mansion is being made by a third party developer that is that that's not how nintendo does things you know well they luigi's mansion 3 is being made by a studio outside of nintendo right and that's technically a third party I mean, you wouldn't, it's a first party IP and it's a first party title mm -hmm. that's being developed by a third party. A better example would be um, Zelda the Minish Cap was made by Capcom. Mm. But nobody says that's a third party game. Now that is a third party developer if there ever yes. was one. Yeah. I think from 20, I think given. Your definition from 2013 to 2019 next level games was a second party developer because they were exclusively making okay. games for Nintendo, but they weren't right. owned by Nintendo. 
So uh, th- there you go. We ha- we found yeah. we found a second there party at some point. <laughs> and now their first party, because apparently second party status ends at a certain point. Yes. Uh, <sighs> hey, we got five months from Dark Bite. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. That was there before. I think I'm stupid. Um. Anyway, yes. What else do we got here? Well, we got Xbox emulations come uh, coming along just just fantastic, just just dandy, just just fine and dandy. Uh, in an article from Kotaku, while platforms as recent as the PS3 and even the Switch are now running very nicely in emulators, the original Xbox has remained something of a thorn in the side of the scene. Um, so it's cool to see that the um, I don't know how to pronounce this. The Zemu emulator uh, making such solid progress. Uh, Zemu's right. version, Z- Zemu's version 0.5 has recently been released, and this video shows some of the games that are able to run in it, including big releases like Halo and, well, not such big names. I, I would, well, I the would video... say XMU because it's supposed to be Xbox. True. So, so maybe XMU. So, yeah, we'll go with that. While the video while the video above is promising, it's also using so many random terrible games for a reason. <laughs> the majority of the console's library remains unplayable in the emulator, hence this being a progress video Ooh. for version 0.5 and not a triumphant full release. Oh, that's if good. there's a multi If it's there's just... a multi-platform game from this generation that you're dying to try out again, you're probably better off trying the PS2 version since emulation is much more mature for that platform. But if it's an Xbox exclusive, you're after, uh, stay tuned for the developments. So, so uh, the first game they showed in this, I don't know why they made this the first game. Uh, oh, they, uh, oh, yeah, I don't know why. They put Amped, and that game is running at like one frame a second. It looks absolutely horrible. So Amped was a first party title. That was like Microsoft's uh, big uh, entry into the extreme sports uh genre games did it run at one frame a second no <laughs> the second game they showed was tony Hawk's pro skater 3 and that looks great it looks like it's running great yeah uh pro skater 2x the xbox exclusive version of pro oh skater 2. and then right after that is three they made it yeah. they, they show three and they both yeah. look great yeah and then they show loons i don't know why <laughs> there's a lot of games in this it looks like well because i know the Xbox 360 had an extensive original Xbox backwards compatibility, and it was mostly done through emulation, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but not a lot of it wasn't the whole library. There were a lot of games missing, and they said they showed a lot of crappy game. They're showing a lot of crappy games just to prove that they can get it done. Because usually, when you do emulation like this, of course you're going to show the good games. You're going <laughs> to want to make sure those work. But if you're going for 100 percent compatibility, you got to include the crappy ones. I'm the chances are, if you get the crappy if you get the crappy ones working, there's a good chance you can get the good ones working too. Uh, TMNT three mutant nightmare. Remember that one? Uh, I only ever played the first one of that era. Oh, because they basically all became the same. Yeah. There were three Sonic riders. Oh boy. So Uh, you know what? It looks like a lot of stuff is running good here. Yeah. Now I didn't know original Xbox emulation was a problem. Because I remember back in the day, it was the PS2 was really difficult to develop for, but you had to because it was the best selling system. Uh, And the Xbox was really easy to develop for because it was running an Intel Pentium chip, like all computers did at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, But apparently, that with the, you know, 20 years later, the PS2 is apparently very easy to emulate, whereas the original Xbox apparently is not. So I don't buy any of this (laughs) because like (laughs) what like they always say things like look we got an emulator that works great like look like xbox is finally working you won't actually be able to use an xbox emulator for like another five years until it becomes like more mainstream and the emulator is more widely available and it's a lot easier for for us people who don't know how to compile our own software to use Mm -hmm. something like this um yeah like gamecube emulators have been around for a really long time uh, but they only yeah. recent. I only personally recently started like getting them to work like right uh, yeah. within the last few years because uh, 
it, it's it's a pain in the ass a lot of these things even playstation 2 yeah. like i still haven't i still haven't used a good playstation 2 emulator like i'm still struggling with like playstation 1 and 64 emulators <laughs> well uh n64 is is i mean they they still don't run amazing, that, that's notor- but, that's notoriously bad yeah. yeah yeah but i could get the games to run like pretty good yeah. on a computer on my super little portable emulators it's it's a crapshoot whether or not they're gonna be good yeah playstation is is always a crapshoot Play, playstation yeah. one um but yeah playstation 2 i've still never had a good emulator so so xbox yeah. original xbox i can't imagine uh getting i i mean i could see this being a problem i, I could i could see emulation on a and an original xbox right. being a problem well again the you know i remember people saying at the time like the original xbox was essentially just a pc with proprietary firmware on it, proprietary OS and whatnot. So I, I'm surprised that it's taken that long for people to like start cracking it with such, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? With such ease, I guess, Right. you know, to get more games running on. I assume this would some, be something that could have been done a lot earlier no, because I, just because of the heart of the original I, Xbox. I, I agree. It is, it is weird that it's, it's uh, taken so long. And yeah. uh, we should also mention that um the xbox series x and s people have cracked that wide open like you can't emulate it on a computer obviously but um right you can put you can upload like ps2 emulators and other kinds of emulators onto it yeah you can put all sorts of uh you can run retro arc on it and then you could have any freaking uh game you want really on there so so you can you can and Microsoft kind of supports development mode, so you can have any really easily. You can have any sort of uh, yeah. emulator, emulator you want on there. So this just means that eventually you might be able to put an Xbox emulator on there. But you could already play your ex- original Xbox games legally on your Xbox yeah. Series X and S. Not all of them, but like a, a decent amount. And I think they're going to restart backwards compatibility soon, like adding more games to the backwards compatibility list. Licky so says, "What's." the problem with n64 emulators what the heck um it's just <laughs> things didn't run good back in the n64 days yeah so, so the n64 hardware was weird in that every game utilized it differently like no game was optimized those two games were optimized for the system in the same way so every game that need that gets released on like uh we virtual channel or what or whatever had to get its own special emulator to run properly. So basically every for every every game on the N64 needs its own special emulator and no N64 emulator can do every game properly. So so if you if you've used an N64 emulator like on your computer or something, the games run fine. Like it, it you you'll play it and you'll probably not even notice anything's wrong. But if you play a game side by side with an actual game on an actual N64, it will be different. If you're not getting yeah. like an authentic experience for a a lot of games. Yeah. Um so that's why if you're like a if you're a freaking uh like a like an enthusiast or like like a like an archival nut like like we yeah. are, you're going to you're going to uh not have that authentic experience yeah anyway cool we're getting we're getting an xbox emulator called xemu or zemu or whatever zemu uh do you think animal crossing will get a new update with new things included says king will yeah every season probably yeah we just got the winter one and actually looks pretty cool but i haven't played animal crossing in a long time uh meta ascension says n64 emulation will be perfect will be perfected when they can nail the vaseline smudged look and super <laughs> low frame rates of the original cruddy hardware true yes very true because you're just not playing perfect dark properly if it doesn't go into slow motion during every single firefight <laughs> Eric says, I like Taco Bell, so I'm not into anything for authenticity. (laughs) (laughs) Next, we got Breath of the Wild NPCs are actually me's. I don't buy this. I saw this on Twitter, and I don't believe it. Really? I don't believe it. The the, the dude found proof of it. (laughs) I know, but I don't believe it. 
it turns out that Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild's character modeling really does follow Nintendo's Mi format. This means an enterprising modder has figured out a way to get NPCs to look like specific Mi's. Um, Twitter user, hey, I'm heroic. If you have to say it, it's probably not true. Uh, who has uh, studiously cataloged more than 100 official Mi's on their Mi library site, discovered over the weekend that Breath of the Wild NPCs use an advanced version of the Mi format called Yumi. Uh, Yumi, Yumi's have almost all the same parameters as Wii U slash 3DS Mi's with a few minor differences here and there. Uh, Alice wrote on Reddit on Monday. Uh, I guess Alice, Alice is, hey, I'm heroic if you missed that. Uh, for the record, there has long been speculation since the game's 2017 launch that Breath of the, Ro- Breath of the Wild resorted to the Mi format to build NPCs to populate the game's fast open world. Alice's work confirms it and also reveals that Mi's can be directly imported into the game. I've never heard of this. Oh, well, it's new. It, it, well, they just discovered it. It's been speculated since the game's launch in 2017 oh, yeah. that Breath of the Wild used Mi's. Yeah, no. Says who? <laughs> yeah, I don't believe that. <laughs> so, 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 like the, the the reason I don't buy it is because uh, I, I mean, all right, I believe that I believe that it's it. Okay, I gotta I gotta justify myself now. <laughs> I think that it uses a format of me's, but it's definitely different, and it's definitely not as easy as just upload your me and it's there. You know, right. this person, somebody in the chat said this person. Uh, EIP underscore in the chat says this person is charging for people to f- to upload their Mii's and get a get a Zelda version out of it. Um, I think like they say in the article, it's it's a there's a few parameters that are different. Yeah. So uh, it's not a one to one conversion. So it's similar to the to the to the me situation. But it's not as easy as let's just make a Bob me. Let's take my me and let's let's make it the Zelda thing. Uh, f- importing me's to Breath of the Wild isn't necessarily laborious, but it does require a modded Switch or Wii U, and then extracting oh, yeah. and editing the Yumi files from the game to take the same attributes as a me file. It's also replacing a specific NPC, so you'd have to find where they are and visit them in the world to see it for yourself. Oh, that's, that's a big game. Yeah, is it random where they where they end up? Yeah, <laughs> that would be interesting. Uh, obviously, the art style of the Mies and characters in Breath of the Wild is quite different, uh, and the two use but the two use essentially the same attributes and parameters. It's a convenient way to get the game to generate unique NPCs at a large scale. The modder figured out that their me would work. The modder figured out what their me would look like in Breath of the Wild. Uh, though the game converted the Mii's hairstyle, which was not one of the Breath of the Wild hair options, into one that it supported. Hats and oh, okay. other headwear, likewise, just convert to different hairstyles. Okay, so it's a modified version of, of, of the... It's like similar to the me format, but yeah. changes here or there. Yeah. Imagine you pay this person to get your me in the game and they do it and it's like all right good luck finding it <laughs> you like, yeah. can't find it at all yeah <laughs> unless you just replace all the me's with you <laughs> yes um but it's still interesting it's still cool that they that they uh yeah. used used uh they're, it's Nintendo. yeah they're reusing assets it's pretty cool yeah or at least doing a version of it and you know yeah making it i thought it was neat yeah when i first saw this i thought that these characters were in the game i was like matt from wii sports is in the game (laughs) and then i i was like oh wait no it's just yeah just the me format still cool though yeah uh oh we got uh master jedi with a raid thanks my guy i appreciate you how you doing uh also hey uh oh somebody in the chat jav javo jacko says uh would it be the same models in age of calamity no it's a completely different engine i can't imagine that being similar 
I mean, the art style is similar, but yeah, it's running. I'm probably running a completely different engine. Hey, what's this about Sony discontinuing PS4 Pros in Japan? Okay, okay. So the first article was the source article. But that's a Japanese website. So let's let's read what IGN has to say on it. Let's let's spend the whole rest of the podcast trying to translate it. I'm kidding. Uh, Go to IGN. And <laughs> as. Re- Sony Japan has reportedly announced that it will end production on the PS4 Pro and will only continue to produce one model of the PS4. It's not clear at the time of writing whether this policy extends to Western markets. I have a, uh, Game I have Watch a Japanese ad that someone... at the top because because I went to Game Watch <laughs> Impress. Nice. Uh, Game Watch reports that Sony has discontinued all models of the PS4 Pro and all but one model of the PS4 Slim with the original PS4 design already out of active production. The only PS4 that will remain in production is the 500 gigabyte Jet Black Slim design. The move has been taken so that Sony Interactive Entertainment can increase production of the PlayStation 5, which has seen major stock shortages since launch, not not least in the US where it had the biggest console launch month in the in the country's history so far the move has only been announced in japan and it's unclear whether sony's western arms will follow suit ign has reached out for a comment but received no response at the time of uh, publication it wouldn't be a huge surprise huge surprising move the ps4 pro retails at the same 399 price point as the ps5 digital edition uh with sony hoping to transition from last gen to new gen Within three years, the company will also be hoping to bolster the number of PS5 console owners as quickly as possible. Xbox made a similar move ahead of the release of the Xbox Series X and S. Uh, the Xbox One and the Xbox Series, the Xbox One and the Xbox One S digital editions were both discontinued in July of 2020. That doesn't mean that PS4 owners will go without games. However, uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO Jim Ryan has repeatedly said that it's crucial to continue serving the older console's huge player base at least until 2022. As part of that support, major exclusives like Horizon Forbidden West will continue to receive PS4 versions at release. So, uh, yeah, this isn't a surprise because Mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft did this. Microsoft did this way quicker. They did this way sooner. Um, Well, I think Microsoft, they did it way way quicker because they kind of needed to. Right. Like they they wanted they definitely wanted more people to um, go to the series Xbox Series than were on Xbox One. So the the Xbox so Xbox is weird because uh, they kind of are marketing that you can play their games wherever you want. So if you have an Xbox yeah. One, you could still play whatever games you want. Um, mm-hmm. The problem is that the Xbox One X, in if you look at the just the spec sheet. The, the there's the xbox series s the xbox mm-hmm. one x and then the xbox series x so the xbox yeah. one x is in the in, in terms of s- graphical power if you look at just the spec sheet the xbox one x is in between the two current gen consoles that microsoft has. right so somebody looking at price points would be like why don't i just get the one x you know not realizing that mm-hmm. it's not going to have the same sort of power playing modern games that the series <laughs> s or x has it's confusing to to it's already confusing to to consumers the whole microsoft mm-hmm. situation but it's yeah. more confusing if you bring the one x into the equation so microsoft is like screw it we're not even gonna have one x is available when the new consoles come out just get that out of here we don't even want to deal with that yeah so sony is is doing the same thing with the pros it took them a little while they they probably yeah. should have done this earlier, but uh, Sony doesn't have the same sort of problem that Microsoft has. So it's a little right. more linear. You get the four, and then now you get the five, and then that's it. The five is yeah. the new one because the number is bigger. They also said that um, this is only pertaining to Japan. I would not be surprised if this, you know, occurs in the in the West as well. Oh, I, like, yeah. I would not be surprised if, like, in a month they confirm, yeah, we're we're discontinuing all PS4s except for those 500 gigs slim. I didn't even realize this was just in Japan. Yeah. 
Uh, let's look at Amazon. Do they have PlayStation 4 Pros available? No. You can buy one for $686. $770 for the uh, Modern Warfare bundle. Yeah. Hey, it comes with Spider-Man, I don't too. Man. Amazon's always weird with consoles. You know, have you ever noticed that? Like, you try oh, to yeah. buy a console on Amazon, there's like a thousand different versions, and they're all wildly different MSRPs. They're not the MSRP. They're always something fakakted. Yeah, you have to be really careful where you're buying. Like, what if you're buying it from yeah. Amazon, if you're buying it from some random third party. Yeah. Uh, so Best Buy doesn't have them at all. They're sold out. Yeah. Geek Squad certified refurbished, three hundred and and sixty dollars. Yeah. So what about GameStop? Oh, GameStop. Yeah, yeah. I I think that it's already been discontinued, or they stopped production on it, and uh, they just right. haven't announced it. Uh, oh yeah, PS4 Pros on eBay are still going for like a lot of money. I think people don't realize that it's yeah. not the thing anymore. Uh, PlayStation Four Pro is not available on GameStop. Yeah. It, I'm pretty sure it's been discontinued here in America too. Yeah, the uh yeah, the Star Wars uh Battlefront 2 PlayStation 4 Pro is 350. Yeah. On what? On eBay. Oh yeah, it's a, yeah, The Death that's Stranding a, yeah. one is 325. That is the Spider-Man the Spider-Man one, you know, the one everybody actually wants uh it's 499 for bidding or buy it now six hundred dollars with a forty dollar shipping that's a dope looking console though i know um i saw a tweet from the nypd the other day that said uh <laughs> that they, they were like doing a thing where they were like giving like an underprivileged family like a bunch of christmas gifts uh-huh and they gave they gave them a ps4 uh-huh and the child that's holding the PS4 looks not happy about it at all. <laughs> like, they probably thought, like, look, we're, everybody wants a PlayStation this Christmas here. We're yeah. giving this kid a PlayStation. Here you go, kid. And they're like, I already have this. I've had this for, like, four yeah. years. I don't need another one. Uh, That's funny. So, yeah. Uh, So don't buy a PlayStation 4 Pro. That should That should go without saying. Yeah. Uh, we also got YouTube Gaming's uh, got as big as year ever. So has gaming in general, I should say. But yeah, specifically, YouTube. Uh, but specifically, and you, in twenty twenty is YouTube Gaming's biggest year ever. A hundred billion watch time hours. Thanks, guys. Thanks yeah. for giving us a slice of that. Uh, YouTube Gaming has uh, has its biggest year ever in 2020 with 100 billion watch time hours and over 40 million active gaming channels. Here we break Holy down God. the moments that defined gaming this year. Where am I? Uh, the world has faced its share of challenges in 2020. <laughs> Despite the ups and downs, many have turned to gaming on YouTube as a way to find connection, entertainment, and to share moments with friends and loved ones during these trying times. Through it all, we've connected even more deeply with gaming creators even some as some even had their biggest year ever on youtube in 2020 in fact there was there has never been a better time to be a youtube gaming creator more than 80,000 youtube gaming creators hit 100,000 subscribers over a over a thousand gaming creators hit 5 million subscribers and over 350 gaming creators reached a whopping 10 million subscribers that uh that's insane yeah, that 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 makes me feel small. <laughs> uh, we now have over forty million active gaming channels, and globally, uh, where there were over a hundred billion hours of gaming content watched on YouTube. That's like traveling to Neptune and back four hundred and seventy-five thousand times. Whoa, Neptune, Neptune, Bob, Neptune. I don't even know where that is in the solar system. It's the last planet in the solar system. If you don't believe Pluto's a planet, if you don't believe in Pluto, yeah, <laughs> the <laughs> live stream of Pluto we had an incredible year. We saw watch time from video game live streams grow to over ten billion hours. Uh, so yeah, it was it was a good year on YouTube gaming. Yeah, we got lots of Fortnite and Minecraft and 
Well, the top overall games watched in 2020 was Minecraft with 201 billion views, then Roblox, uh, Ganaria Free Fire, which I've never heard of. Oh, that, that, I think that's a, is that like a Chinese thing? I must. Uh, GTA 5 and Fortnite. So yes, if you ever yes, want to know why the, they keep... This is, the I think, the Chinese uh, um, uh, PUBG. Oh. Well, if you ever want to know why they keep re-releasing GTA 5 and not releasing GTA 6, this is why. <laughs> 70 billion views on GTA videos. Sam's playing with the dog outside. It's if you hear a lot of like scratching around, that's the dog running around. Uh, Ganaria. Uh, I'm trying to make sure that it's actually Chinese. Yeah. Uh, owner owned by C Limited. Oh, Singapore. There's Singapore. Headquarters in Singapore. So. Singapore. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Is that it? Is there more? I mean, there's there's a lot more, but I think you get the gist of it. Oh, there's a lot of uh a... there there's a lot of uh uh, uh charity stuff. Jack raised yeah. six hundred and sixty thousand in twelve hours for COVID relief and courage. J D raised five hundred thousand. I'll say that uh this year was a great year for streaming on youtube you know the year where we stopped streaming altogether on youtube <laughs> yeah <laughs> this year was a big deal for streaming on youtube to be fair uh we weren't exactly the top demographic for streams doing good on YouTube. right uh jack septic guy for example streams on twitch um but courage jd he's a youtube exclusive streamer of uh, valkyrie started streaming on youtube uh dr disrespect started streaming on youtube but he was kind of forced to <laughs> uh, and they all seem to be doing great so uh I mean it's no surprise here that uh YouTube seems to be you know the the juggernaut of video content on YouTube is just doing better yeah. again for another year. Uh gaming in general did really good this year uh because it always does every year it gets bigger and bigger but also because yeah. of covid it it got um it got a, you know, a big bump because everybody's staying home. It could have mm -hmm. probably done better because, I mean, a lot of studios kind of uh, had a slow year because they were all affected by COVID. But it uh, didn't matter to people. People were buying up whatever they could because they were at home, yeah. had a lot of time on their hands and wanted to escape. So it was a it, it, here's an industry that was doing good. You know what? It was a good year for the Wolf Den too. We had a lot of good. It was, yeah. a, it was a good, positive time, despite yeah what was happening in the world. And I thank yeah. all you and, for that. And you finally dropped that two hundred pound sack of crap that was just dragging your company down. Two hundred? I am a fat man, <laughs> and I'm not proud of it. Dad bod and pandemic bod at the same time is not a good combination. That's a, that's a wild combination. Um. So yeah, no surprise. Things are going great overall in the gaming and YouTube spheres. Uh, I don't know what Twitch. Yes. I don't know what the deal is with Twitch. Um, I'd imagine Twitch is doing pretty good. Uh, this year, 2020, is the year that everybody finally figured out that the people who run Twitch might not be that great. <laughs> yeah. Um, for Look, years, everybody. For years, everybody looked at Twitch and they were like, Twitch is the cool guys. They're like the cool kids. And everybody wants to be friends with the cool kids, right? But right. no, they've always been just like a bunch of like, it's like a bunch of high schoolers running a company. They don't know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a while for people to catch up to where you are, you know? Because no. like you always knew that like the Twitch people were bad, but eventually people came around to your way of thinking oh me yeah i'm smart everybody yeah. listen to bob <laughs> yeah it's like when everybody finally realized that boondock saints is a bad movie i've been saying that for years <laughs> and just now everybody's reaching my level oh eventually people will find out that kanye west is a bad artist right well yes exactly <laughs> uh, we have some we definitely have some comments to go through about that I know uh, for a fact. bring it <laughs>
This year was also the year that uh, people at Twitch got canceled for for being yes. not so nice. Um, and there are people that I knew were not so nice <laughs> from way mm-hmm. back in the day. Um, but you know, you have no proof or evidence, and you can't like go to the police and be like, "This person yeah. harasses people." It's just well, through the grapevine you hear it, so you can't just like you know convict them. Anyway, I'm glad uh, things worked out the way they did uh, yes. in, in that in terms of that this year. Um, anyway, we got more news still. Uh, we got yeah. someone added ray tracing to Super Nintendo games. <laughs> because why not? Uh Ray tracing is one of the biggest advancements in gaming technology and is utilizing high P- high-end PCs, PlayStation 5, and both the Xbox Series X and S. Oh, and some Super Nintendo games, thanks to one incredible modder. Uh, ray tracing is a rendering technique that simulates the way light bounces off of objects, uh, which can create much more realistic shadows, reflections, and lighting effects. And game developer and software engineer Ben Carter of Shironeku Labs took it upon took uh took on the challenge on making it work on the super nintendo with this super rt chip you can see it in action here so it's a chip that uh, it allows that only processes ray tracing yes for the okay. super nintendo that makes sense carter wanted to do something similar to Nintendo's super effects chip uh that was used in games like Star Fox to advance 3d graphics and special effects and creating a new field of programmable gate array fpga fg f okay ign got the acronym wrong it's fpga field programmable gate array right chip that would render the ray tracing for the super nintendo or more specifically carter super famicom the super rt chip can produce single bounce reflections and direct direction line shadow direction light shadows and Carter made it possible by removing the top case of the Super Famicom to make room for the cabling and sacrificing an awful awful pachinko game to allow the Super Famicom to connect into a DE10 Nano FPGA uh, development board with Cyclone F- Cyclone 5 FPGA, which is similar a similar chip to the one being used by the upcoming Analog Pocket. Oh. Uh, for more Super Nintendo, check out IGN's articles on the subject. So this, so yeah, this looks really cool. The, the the video says right on the front, "Apologies for the poor capture quality. It is a bad capture." Like <laughs> he's he's took taking a video of a CRT screen. That's right. a little disappointing because, like, I mean, it's cool that it's you know it's, it's authentic, but like yeah. you know. Run this thing through a frame riser, man. Throw throw through a capture card, dude. You already got a new chip Seriously, in there. Bro, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is I mean, this is excessive. This is not some this is not something that would have ever been possible back in the day. Like nobody would have had the yeah. power to do something like this. Um But but imagine. This is like this is like a future punk, you know? That's what this kind of reminds yeah. me of. It's like you're taking retro hardware and throwing something like wacky, some wacky new technology on it that never would have been possible. This is definitely, uh, it's definitely like future punk, like from an older science fiction movie. This is like if you, if, if someone from the future went to the nineties and was like, check out this chip, put it in Star Fox, yeah. you know? because yeah. they would have never been able to do something like this um, right it's bizarre looking it's weird yeah um because you have the the weird real-time lighting going around i mean i guess you yeah. could have like like faked it by having like animations of shadows going around but uh yeah you wouldn't be able to do it with like a like an actual like if you're controlling the character and stuff you know yeah that's pretty cool but of course com- you know completely useless completely it's useless nothing to society yeah uh, but it was done just because and sometimes those are the best mods you're right i mean that's you know that's how i live my life um there was another thing i want to talk about last week we talked about we we made our game of the year tier list yes uh and i said use the hashtag wolfden2020 
and uh, show us your tier lists. And only two people did it, but here they are. Um, <laughs> you got Fallen Kayaker, who has his tier list right here. Uh, I mean, I imagine there's going to be a lot of people who didn't play most of the games, you know? Yeah. Uh, he put Warzone and Among Us on D tier. Wow. What's up? What's going on there? Uh, Mara 35C. All right. I, you know what? I could, I could believe that. Uh, but there's a lot of S tier going on here, dude. They're not all S tier. Yeah. All right. You got to take some of them out of there and put them in A tier. All right, buddy. Got too much going on. But the 55, 51 Worldwide Classics in B tier. Uh, a lot of people would be mad about that. I will talk about that later. We also have uh, T Dog Gaming who put Cyberpunk in S tier. What's happening? <laughs> uh, Genshin Impact in B. Valor in D. Okay, I haven't played Valorant, so I have nothing to say about that. E has Fogs. Come on, dude. Thought you were bro. He did that just to troll you. Just to make me mad. And Avengers is also yeah. in E tier. So. Yeah. Or, you know what? It's possible maybe he played Fogs by himself. I don't know if it's significantly worse if you're playing by yourself. Mm -hmm. I just know if you're playing with a friend, it's loads of fun. Uh, I gotta say though, uh, I tweeted out, I didn't tweet out the tier list. I just tweeted out, uh, this picture from the tier list, which was a screenshot of just 51 worldwide classics in D tier and cyberpunk <laughs> in E tier. Cause yeah. I thought it was funny that, uh, uh, the hell is this game called classic? What the hell is this game called? 51 worldwide games no but there's there's the, the thing in front of it that's not shown uh oh so, something classics i'm having a, a aneurysm right now um but i thought it was funny that that game is higher than cyberpunk and yeah people weren't mad that i put cyberpunk, clubhouse games clubhouse games thank you very much people weren't mad that uh cyberpunk was so low people were mad that 51 worldwide games was only on d tier and I was like, yo, you don't even know what the context is. You don't. Even, this could be freaking games with the most glitches. Yeah. Why would you want it to be higher? But no, everyone's, everyone's mad that Clubhouse Games was so low. But there, look, look at the games above it. There were so many great games, you know? And this, is, this is the list of the best games. So they're all good. Yeah. Nothing to be sad about, even though I was just ripping apart other people's tier lists. Will... Yes, Bob. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. This is from Lil Smokey. It was sent to me by our good buddy Ian. Uh, I need to unmute. Yeah, it's a video. It's just a video. Yeah. I gotta mute it. I can only play a little bit of it. It's. Mario from Mario 64 going into a painting, but the painting is Peach's only fans. <laughs> that is really funny. <sighs> I, uh. I lulled. It was a good one. Now we will talk to you people real quick. Yes. If you have left a comment over on our YouTube channel, uh, Wolf Den Podcast, this is the part of the video where we will answer you. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. Elite Pepperomania in the chat right now says, that's a Kanye song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we got here? I wouldn't know. <laughs> oh, Fred put a lot in here because uh, you, you you made people mad. Uh, oh, Nick Province says, Will, does your daughter watch while you play games? My son, who... Oh, this is going to be an evil one. My son, who <laughs> just turned one, is always mesmerized when I play Animal Crossing. Playing anything else, he could care less. Also, hello, Bob. Love the channel and the podcast. Thank you very much, Nick. So, we don't actually... We try, we're try. we trying not to expose our daughter to screens as much as possible. Like TV screens, uh, telephones, tablets, things like that. Um, just because I started somewhere that uh, for the first two years of a child's life, that's when their brain is like being developed the most. And, you know, being exposed to screens could interfere with that. We've screwed up from time to time. Um, <laughs> but I will say for the most part, um, 
if I'm watch if like the TV's on, she'll look at it for a second and then go off and do something else. She doesn't really care all that much. Um, I don't really play games in front of her because I'm trying to have my attention focused on her. Because if I'm sitting there playing a game and she's off chewing on uh, electrical wire somewhere, <laughs> then I'm a bad dad. What so. a, what about dot matrix screens? Does that count? How old? How old till a dot matrix screen is going to be introduced into your uh, daughter's life? I don't. That's a good point. You know, like does the type I mean, of screen matter? Well, I would. Ass- I don't know. Because everything in this house is an LCD screen. <laughs> right. So. Like, what if it's not backlit? Would that be better? I don't uh, uh, It might be. Just something to think about, Will. Yeah. I know I know what you're getting at. Uh, Aaron, I just want her to play cal- a calculator. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Suber says, uh, Assassin's Creed isn't annual anymore, and I personally feel like they've made a hu- huge improvements in the last three games. That being said, I definitely understand why someone wouldn't be interested in them anymore. Also, Immortals Phoenix Rising is one of my favorite games that was released this year, and I definitely think uh, you would enjoy it if you gave it a chance, Bob. You can't get Breath of the Wild on your PS5, so that could be a reason to play it. That's a good point. I feel like apparently, would, like I, I would probably like it just because there's platforming elements. A, a lot of people are into Immortals Phoenix Rising. Like it is apparently a very popular game. Like there's overall, just, there's just a lot of games that like blindsided me out of nowhere. Like yeah. out of nowhere there was like a million games that like i need to play also apparently uh immortals is the t- is kind of like god of war in that it uses the shoulder buttons for melee combat i don't like that i don't like that at all either i had i i changed you can change the control scheme of god of war to use the face buttons but by that point i was too used to using the shoulder buttons that i switched back but i didn't like it because shoulder buttons are not for melee they're for guns you know range yeah uh we also got anthony zombie hunter hey guys love the podcast happy new year to you guys and i would just love to say if this get doesn't get red i really want a uh, super if this does get red i really want super mario strikers on the switch hey we talked about that how do you feel hey. about that game we talked about it before i think that yeah, game is great good I, game I, yeah. I, again i played it way later so i played it uh when we recorded a kirk fog album uh it's a deep cut. It, I, we were staying over in this person's home studio, and mm-hmm. somebody broke out the GameCube and was like, "Yo, I brought Super Mario Strikers." <laughs> and these are people who don't play games often. Um, yeah. And I was like, "Oh, I've never actually played Strikers." And we played it for like a really long time. And I was like, "Holy shit! I completely missed out on Super Mario Strikers. This game's great." Yeah. So that was like 2014. I want to say is when I played Super Mario Strikers mm. for the first time. Yeah. Uh, I Dizzy kinda, Delta. Um, I keep looking at the wrong screen. Dizzy Delta. <laughs> LOL. Bob and Will haven't played anything this year. It seems, according to other people's tier list, we have played a lot of games this year. <laughs> yeah. Bob probably never played anything because of Warzone. I'm surprised the amount of games you guys haven't beaten either. Sheesh. All right. Well, I, I want to clarify. Will, I will admit I don't beat games. <laughs> it's been I rarely beat games. I want to clarify that I did say most of the games I played this year were older games. They were from my backlog. So I really couldn't put Uncharted 4 and Journey and Shadow of the Tomb Raider on my best of 2020 when they didn't come out in 2020. I You should be mad at me, though. I don't play a lot of uh, modern stuff. Um, I... I feel weird. Like, I see a lot of other YouTubers tweet, like, uh, oh, I'm playing this now. Oh, I just beat this. And it's like, how do you have the time to do all that? I don't yeah. understand. That's like, must be what you, I mean, I, you know what? I probably spend a lot of time just watching random YouTube videos. I'd like probably waste <laughs> a lot of my day just watching garbage mm. on YouTube. Um, so, I, yeah, I'll admit I don't play a lot of games. But, you know, I think it's it's a substantial amount after looking at that tier list i did play a decent amount of games that but you know what the problem is they're all nintendo switch games i play a lot of nintendo switch yeah. games i don't play a lot on other platforms i will admit that and i do play way too much war stuff <laughs> uh we got sean diggs who said also bob's bias towards everything mario or nintendo is outrageous a game isn't better because it's super short to me it is make your own it, list it, dude <laughs> it certainly helps <laughs> I am I am definitely biased. I like platformers. I'm not like yeah. I'll say a Mario game's bad if it's bad. Um I particularly didn't like uh 
Super Mario U Deluxe, Super Mario 3D World. I don't think it was. I think it was good. I don't think it was like you know amazing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I have a bias towards platformers. I like platformers, and I I have a bias against games with like a lot of uh, turn based or like a uh, dialogue uh, like uh, like a. Uh, I don't want to say RPG elements because I like some RPG elements. To a point. Mm-hmm. Some of the, some games have like RPG elements that like don't matter. They don't do anything. Right. They're just there uh, because every game has to have them. Same thing with crafting elements. Every game now has crafting. Oh, I don't elements. like crafting. I don't. I do not like. They crafting. don't enhance the game in any way, shape, or form. I like games that have that have that, but then have auto versions like uh like a button that just says you have all the materials to craft this do you want to and then you yeah. go yes i would like to do that yeah. thank you for making it easy for me far cry 3 did that yeah it had crafting and then it was like oh you have all the stuff for this do you want to do it and i was like yeah do it but then far yeah, cry 4 had like way too in-depth crafting and i wasn't into yeah. it anyway there's still more paul yeah. steven says i don't want to hate but luke skywalker isn't even the best fictional character in star wars i mean ban him <laughs> and, I mean, uh, things have changed, Paul Stevens. Once upon a time, he was the best fictional character in Star Wars. <laughs> He's still the best fictional character in Star Wars. I will fight every single person in this chat and in the world who disagrees. Well, next, qu- next comment. Well, I would agree with you. I would agree with you. But it's I also I have to say I've been kind of off of Star Wars for a long time. And I feel right. like I'm going to continue to be off of Star Wars. They announced all of the new stuff today. The the uh, they didn't announce Oh, the High new, Republic? We knew High Republic was happening, but they announced more yeah, stuff they, about they, High Republic. Yeah, they have like a date and stuff. I'm me. not going to be into that at all. I can feel it right now. That's like <laughs> some weird mix between like like uh, the prequels and like new stuff. And it, I don't like it's it. It's all books. It's all books. So it's by it, making them books, you, you made them inessential. <laughs> It, but that's the thing. It's books. It's 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 one of those things where it's books in the hopes that if it does good, it could be turned into other media. Right. I'm, I don't. I don't, know. I don't want the reason I like. I like Star Wars because it's sci-fi fantasy. But like, yeah, the sci-fi makes me able to handle the fantasy. It makes the fantasy right. easier to digest. You know, this is yeah. fantasy with sci-fi. That's what it feels right. like to me, and I don't, I don't like that. I don't know. I'll, I'll probably just glance at the Wikipedia pages for the High Republic, you know, just to get because I like having a general gist of it. But I also did the same thing back in the old expanded universe, where I was just read the Wikipedia pages for like some of the books that seemed interesting, just to have a general idea of what was going on. You don't actually read this stuff. There's a thousand books, <laughs> and it, it, and most of them are garbage. And so people don't like Solo because, you know, and, and I, uh, to their credit, uh, Solo does a lot of like, oh, this is how this is how he got the Millennium Falcon. This is how he met Lando. This is how he met Chewie. This is how he got his gun. This is how he got his vest and all that other crap. But that's like every single young Han Solo book just smashed into a two and a half hour movie. Mm hmm. And these are the same people who would read those Han Solo books and feel so superior for knowing that stuff. And then when Disney made a movie about it, oh, Disney doesn't know anything about Han Solo. But but that's the thing. With those Expanded Universe books, you were so starved for content that like the books weren't as good as the movies, but you you felt no. like they were great because uh, you, there was there, the, the expectation was minimal. You know, going into it, but this is this minimal, is a movie, but... so you're like, I expect it to be great because they spend millions and millions of dollars on it. But the but at the same time, these what these books did was they provided, you know, data. They provided facts, for, uh, trivia for fans to uh, like learn and keep in the back of their minds. Because fans have, and this is all fans. This is this is the biggest generalization I'll make. Fans like to have trivia in their mind to show off that they're a fan of something so when when disney came out and basically did that that they apparently they did it wrong and that that's not what fans wanted out of a star wars movie meanwhile that's what they've been doing since you know the start of the eu officially back with heir to the empire in 92 so 
I just hate Star Wars fans. I really do. I stand by that. I liked half of Solo. I like the second half of Solo, but I haven't. I, I haven't good. seen it since I saw it in theaters. So Solo is good. Solo is fun. Uh, I'm in the middle of a rewatch of the whole saga right now. So when I get to Solo, I'll let you know what I think. The last one is by Kirk Knight, who says, "Does anyone actually like Will?" Probably because of your <laughs> your analysis of uh, what's his name, Kanye. But yeah. AV responds, "Did your mother not hug you enough as a child?" My f- my favorite uh, my favorite genre of Wolf Den comment is somebody saying something about one of us, and then the uh, somebody else replying, yeah. clowning on them. <laughs> That's my favorite genre of Wolf Den comment. That's a lot of anti Will comments because of my opinions on a rapper. <laughs> no, honestly, what are you looking at? Because the, there was, I thought there was going to be more oh, from from. I'm looking Fred. at what Fred posted, and yeah, he didn't post any. That that might be the only one. That's the only one. Yeah, yeah. I must. Have, I, there's, I'd assume that there's more though. <laughs> I haven't looked at the I comments. <laughs> Listen, man. Your favorite album is what Pinkerton. <laughs> blue pinkerton is people always say pinkerton is the best weezer album but it's not the blue album is the best weezer album because that is weezer distilled down to their purest form that's not rivers going through some shit that's just weezer straight up i, I might have to agree yeah <sighs> listen when i know something i'm right about it <laughs> uh now we're in the chat dominic says yes. you look like jesus thanks dude um, Razzle Jazzle says, "Yo, Heir to the Empire was great. The new Thrawn trilogy is too sure. Lots of bad Star Wars books, but there are a select few authors that do good work. I'm there re- are. F- I'm really excited yeah. about what the Mandalorian did. That could bring in some old expanded universe stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There, I'm not saying like everything." It, like every bit of Star Wars EU is bad or crap or whatnot. There are like the Thrawn trilogy, the original Thrawn trilogy was pretty good. I really like the Shadow of the Empire novel. I thought that was fantastic. Um, there are good good elements to it, but you know, it's it's always like finding a needle in a haystack trying to find a good Star Wars, like a good Star Wars EU story that like you're not embarrassed to have read. <laughs> Is there any chance that you would revisit the backlog shows as Illusion Fox? Uh, minimal. Chances are very yeah. slim that that would happen. It's just too much work. There's too much going on. It's we and look. It's not that we don't want to. We love doing that. It's just the amount of because we want. We always wanted to make that like a much higher production value. But it you know that required finding a location, setting up multiple cameras. Um, having some having a crew there with us and that just takes a lot of time a lot of effort it's, it's, it's a lot of setup honestly the actual shooting isn't really that bad it's just a day yeah of our no. lives and we shoot like a bunch yeah. of them at once the the problem the biggest problem is w- what do we do with it uh like we can't post it on the main channel because it doesn't do good um mm-hmm. we can make a second channel but it's not going to do good there either um and like it's just not worth it. It's, uh, like I, I know it's like I love doing it. I love the the, the end product. Um, it's just there's no uh, return on our time investment, yeah. and our time is better spent in other places. That's just that's just how it is. Um, Pencil Hearts is isn't Taika Waititi writing the Star Wars at some point? Writing for Star Wars, he at is. Some point? He is attached to do his own movie. Yeah, they haven't said what it is, but that's fantastic. That would be that would be fun. Oh, Lou Louibic says this said this before in the chat. Well, how dare you say that the Dark Knight Returns is an overrated comic six years ago? I just saw that video last night. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll say if you've read as many Batman comics as Will has, you're allowed to say that one of them, one of the most popular ones, is overrated. Thank you. I, look, I'm. It's overrated in the fact that it's not the only Batman comic there is that's that's the one like every like anytime they make a movie on batman that's that's always the first one they throw at you to prove that they know what they're talking about but the thing is like there god damn there are so many other batman comics that do what dark knight returns did 
you know, before and since. That's one of the reasons why I'm excited for Matt Reeves' Batman movie, because when he listed his, you know, the comics that influenced him, he did not mention The Dark Knight Returns. He mentioned The Long Halloween, Batman Ego, Batman Year Two, all these other, like, random ones that I'm, like, really excited for. So that's what I'm getting at. It's just it's not that the Dark Knight Returns is overrated. It's just that it's not the only Batman comic you should ever concern yourself with. If you read it, but also read all these other books. And year one is better. It says spilled milk com. Year one is better he's than right. Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, he's, he's I think uh um I mean I like the long Halloween. Yeah, long Halloween's great. That that sequel to that, Dark Victory is great. No Man's Land is fantastic. I tell everyone to read that. Uh, what else do we got in the chat here? Bob, I spotted a couple of pocket operators on your desk. They're right here. Uh, which ones do you have? I have the uh, the PO3033KO 30, uh, for Christmas, and I'm thinking of picking up another one. So I have... That's these guys. Let me unplug it. That's these things right here. Uh, this, this is the speak because I, I really only got it because I, you can talk into it and it'll reproduce what sounds like a super Nintendo like effect on the voice. <laughs> and that's like the only way you can, you can't like digitally reproduce that. You have to like, you have to like, uh, you know, you have to process it through something like this. Um, yeah. and then, uh, this one is the Mega Man one which I have not played around with too much, but it has just a lot of Mega Man sound effects farted into it. So it's basically like a Mega Man drum machine. It's kind of cool. <laughs> um, I want to make new like Twitch alerts with it, but I haven't really played around with it yet. And that's that. Does Will have a Batman tattoo? <laughs> uh, no. The thought has crossed my mind, not going to lie. Uh, I do have a friend who has a Batman tattoo. So there's that. <laughs> um, now people are just saying butts in the chat. Yeah. Will needs a poster of the Batman symbol. I've got Batman posters like in storage. Well, if he just moves from his chair. Oh, yeah. Mike's blocking it. <laughs> there you go. There this it is. This is not comfortable. I mean, I have Ugh. to. Beep. Um, I refused to buy another streaming service other than Netflix and Crunchyroll. So I think I'm done with superhero movies. All these services defeats the purpose of not having cable. Very true. I hate that there is now a thousand streaming services. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting to I don't to that really point. want to pay for another one. Uh, we have to go right now because I'm about to run out of storage on this computer. So, okay. <laughs> thank you for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put up an archive version of it the next day over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast, where you can watch it on demand wherever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm and your favorite podcast service of choice. If you listen to us or watch us on any of those platforms please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on those respective stores audio podcast is on stitcher people have asked me about it it's there trust me it might take a, a little bit longer for the new episodes to process but it is on stitcher if it's not on any other service that you use at me on twitter i will fix that thank you for being here thank you for hanging out uh what was I going to say? Uh, I'll be streaming probably not till Thursday. Uh, I was going to stream yesterday. It turns out I have a lot of work to do. So that's not going to happen. Uh, so, yeah. I'll see you for a video on Thursday, and then we'll be streaming. Somebody's banging on the door. I don't know what the deal is with that. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging out. Stay here for the raid. We will raid somebody. Uh, just say hi to whoever it is, and I'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.